This video presentation details best practices pertaining to the installation of a Calyx ONT in a non-temperature controlled environment. In this second video in the series, we will focus on completing and testing a fusion splice of the fiber pigtail to the existing pre-installed composite cable. As a final step, power will be applied to the ONT using a UPS as the power source. In the previous video, we installed the incoming composite cable and stripped the cable down to the buffer tube layer. At this point, the buffer tube can be wrapped around the splice tray. Mark the buffer tube where you intend to remove the outer jacket. With the buffer tube marked, the outer jacket can be carefully removed and the protective gel within the buffer tube can be cleaned away using an alcohol-based cleaner or wipe. Depending on the type of fiber being used, thread the multiple strands of exposed fiber around the splice tray to minimize the risk of kinking or breaking the fiber. From the bundle of fiber strands, separate out the active fiber that will be used for this ONT. Trim this fiber to the desired length. Typically, the fiber will be trimmed back such that it will align with the buffer tube sleeve holder molded into the splice tray. At this point, we are ready to attach a fiber pigtail to the active fiber. Begin by attaching the connectorized end of the pigtail to the bulkhead fitting on the ONT. Wrap the pigtail fiber around the splice tray. Remove the outer jacket of the pigtail back to a position that will align with the end of the active fiber and trim off the Kevlar strands and outer jacket of the pigtail. Thread the pigtail fiber around the splice tray. Snip the pigtail fiber back to the point where it will align with the buffer tube sleeve retainer. Strip back the inner fiber jacket from the pigtail end to a length suitable for splicing. Insert the prepared pigtail end into one side of the fusion splicer. From the active fiber end, slip a buffer tube sleeve onto the fiber. This sleeve will be used in a later step after the fiber has been fusion spliced. Using a cleaver, snip the end of the fiber off to ensure a clean cut and the cut is at the proper angle. Insert the cleaved end into the fusion splicer and complete the splice. As the splice is being completed, the fusion splicer will display critical information as it pertains to the quality of the splice, including optical loss. Slide the buffer tube sleeve over the spliced connection. Insert the spliced fiber and sleeve into the fusion splicer's heater and seal the sleeve to the fiber. Wrap any excess fiber around the splice tray, ensuring manufacturer's bend radius specifications are honored. Make sure the fiber is totally enclosed within the splice tray and reinstall the clear mylar cover over the tray. Using a fiber splice inspection tool, confirm the fiber end face of the SCAPC pigtail is free of soil contamination. Common causes of contamination include dust, isopropyl alcohol, oil from hands, mineral oils, epoxy resin, oil-based inks, and gypsum. In some cases, a damaged or improperly cleaved end face can also cause a degradation in the connection. Using the software that is included with the inspection tool, view the end face and verify that it is free of contamination and or damage. If the end face connection is good, the screen will display pass. If outside spec, the software will indicate fail. Note that flaws in the end face are readily seen on the display. The software also includes a more detailed view of the exact nature of the end face characteristics. Upon confirming the pigtail end face is acceptable, test the end face of the pigtail coming from the ONT. 
if necessary, clean the ONT's SC-APC connector using any commercially available abrasive strip and retest as needed. Once complete, insert the ONT pigtail into the bulkhead connector directly below the splice tray. With the fiber connection complete, power connections can now be made. In this configuration, a UPS will be installed in a controlled environment with the power signal cable being routed from the outside of the home to the UPS located in the garage. Prepare the grommet where the power and signal cord will enter the ONT. Using a utility knife, cut a small X through the grommet where the power cord will pass through. String the power and signal cable up through the grommet, leaving enough slack inside the ONT to allow for wire stripping. From the bottom of the ONT electronics module, remove the power connector and set aside. Strip and dress the wires on the power signal cable and attach them to the power connector previously removed. Depending on the cable being used, wire the connector per the following chart. Reinsert the power connector into the ONT electronics module, ensuring it is pushed all the way in. Secure the cable as shown within the enclosure. Make one final check to ensure that cords and fiber are stored appropriately and close the ONT. In this final section, the UPS will be installed and connected to AC power. Locate the UPS in a location free of moisture and or wind-driven rain. Make sure the UPS is located within reach of the power signal cable exiting the ONT. Install the UPS battery on the shelf provided inside the unit. Connect the battery leads to the UPS. Insert the power signal cable into the connector provided on the UPS. Attach the AC power cord into the connector provided on the UPS. Plug in the power cord to an available AC power outlet and confirm that the power LED on the UPS comes on. Secure the power signal cable and AC power cord and reinstall the cover on the UPS. Once services are installed and configured, the ONT is ready for operation. This completes the second installment of installing P-Series Outdoor ONTs. Look for the next installment in the coming weeks.